Good morning everyone. I'm out here in Metro Atlanta today and I'm currently exploring a stream that is just down the road from my apartment. Um, the plan is to hit a few different sites today but I'm going to get after it here and start flipping some of these rocks and we will see what we can find. And right here we have a beautiful female southern two-line salamander. Right beside of her is the second most common stream-dwelling salamander in the Georgia Piedmont. This is the spotted dusky salamander. Now this guy has a bit of mud on his back, but you can kind of see the white spots or speckles on the side, and that's a dead giveaway for them. But most importantly, we have a freshly laid southern two-line salamander egg clutch here. And these eggs were likely laid by this female right here because this is the season when female two-line salamanders lay their eggs and attach them to the underside of flat rocks just like this right here and they will actually remain with those eggs up until they hatch out into little larvae and of course the larvae um, live in these streams and eventually lose their gills and the cycle continues um, I'm going to leave this two lined where she is and try to gently put this rock back, but I may move the spotted dusky salamander so we can get a closer look at him. Again, really common salamanders, but cool to see both species together here and a nice egg clutch underneath this rock. So I am no longer in the little urban stream you guys seen me in in the last clip. I have now moved to a more pristine area. And under the first log I flipped right here is not one, but two absolutely beautiful four-toed salamanders. Now I have talked about these in previous videos, but um, I'll give you guys a brief summary again. They are the only members of the genus Hemodactylium and they love small wetlands like this. They prefer to attach their eggs underneath moss and leaf litter at the edge of these pools. So I would say these are likely two females here that are preparing to lay eggs at the edge of this vernal pool. I actually did not have any idea these guys were here, so a welcome surprise. Um, I came down here to flip some logs for spotted salamanders and look for spring salamanders, but I will always take four toads. They are really common up north, but in the southeast, they have a really patchy distribution, especially right here in the Georgia Piedmont. Um, populations are really um, fragmented, and... I don't think they're doing too well here. Obviously where they do occur, they uh, reach pretty good numbers, but those places are few and far between. So I'm going to get some good photographs of these two here and carefully put their log back. So hopefully they can lay eggs here for the next generation of four-toed salamanders to come out into this little wetland here. And they will actually lose their gills in about 30 days after they hatch out and then there are miniature versions of the adults. So I just moved up here to a slightly larger um, wetland, hoping to see some more four-toed salamanders. And under the first log I flipped right here is a big chunky adult three-line salamander. Now this individual has a regenerated tail, so the tail's a bit short, but it makes up for that in how thick it is. Um, yeah, I was hoping to see some spotted salamanders or some more four-toads was not really expecting to see one of these, but I will take it. They love habitats like this. Um, Spring-fed swampy pools, um, seepage areas, floodplains. Um, Three-line salamanders are really common in these kinds of habitats, but it is starting to rain now, so I'm probably just going to put this individual back and let the rain do its thing tonight, and I will probably be heading out in the morning to hit up some other sites and hopefully with everything being wet, there will be some more out. Yeah, nice, gorgeous adult three-line salamander. So it has been a day since you guys last seen me with the three-line salamander in the previous clip. And I'm out here in a new area of the Georgia Piedmont today. And under this log right here is two nice adult spotted salamanders. Um, both really good sized individuals, beautiful. We should be seeing a lot more of these today, so I'm just going to put both of these back here and we'll see what else we can turn up. And the third spotted salamander of the day is this good sized male here. This one has the really nice orange spots on the head. I'm always like seeing those. 
really pretty individual. Um, with the recent rains, these guys are out in numbers now, and in the coming weeks, we should be seeing some females in this region. So, always cool to see they are one of the more common ambistema. Not quite as thrilling as the tigers I've had in my last few videos, but really beautiful salamanders and always a joy to see. So, I'm going to put this guy's log back because it is really cold out here still. And under this next log, the fourth spotted of the day is massive. This is a large female here. Notice she is much chunkier and does not have the swollen cloaca like the males in the previous clips. Um, what a unit. This is a big spotted. Absolute beast of a spotted salamander. I have seen some this size, but this is probably for sure in my top five biggest spotted of all time. So really big good looking individual i'm going to get a close-up over here really nice spaced out spots um super attractive salamander they like these nice big logs here um but yeah i'm gonna put this big girl back under her log here and keep on flipping so we have now moved up to this nice little rocky seep here and under one of the first big rocks was this big seal salamander here. I've noticed this guy is much larger than the uh, spotted dusky salamander earlier in my video. Um, much more killed tail, really big jaws. And the seal salamanders in the Piedmont here typically lack a lot of pattern. I know I've talked about this before. Sometimes they'll have the faint white speckles on the side and on the belly, which can make them hard. But um, this looks like a nice big seal salamander to me, so really cool i'm just going to put this big guy back under his rock here and keep on flipping and hopefully we will get a spring salamander soon all right guys noah just turned up this big adult red salamander here typically the coloration of these guys fades as they age and get to this size but this one isn't the brightest individual but for its size it's really pretty um nice and long not even super stocky but as you can see it's a pretty lengthy salamander um it's in this nice little headwater stream here right at the head of a small spring um it was actually under a submerged rock so textbook red salamander habitat hopefully there will be some spring salamanders here as well because i have found these guys here before um, but always cool to see nice big adult red salamander I'm going to get some quick photographs, put this guy back, and keep on flipping rocks to try to turn up the spring. And the next salamander of the day is another spotted salamander. This is a small male here, really far upland from where we found the last ones. This guy's actually on a hillside above a seep here. Um, Noah just found this beauty. Perfect um, yellow-orange contrast near the head. Um, just a really vibrant individual. As you can see, we're following this seep here, really nowhere near any vernal pools or traditional habitat. So this guy has a pretty long way to go if he wants to breed this season, but there's still time and some warm rains coming through, I think within the next two weeks. So I'm just gonna get some quick photographs because this is the prettiest spot of the day by far, even though it's not the largest. And we're going to put him back and keep on hiking up this seep. All right, guys, on the way out of here, we just flipped one more good sized male spotted salamander. Not the prettiest one we've seen today, but still a really good looking salamander. Um, we're probably going to drive north now and try to get some more diversity, maybe some Webster salamanders, um, some different things that are a bit out of range here, but. Yeah, another spotted salamander. Always great to see. Spring is definitely right around the corner. So I'm going to put this guy's log back here and head on out to the next site. So we just made it to our next location here on this sort of dry xeric slope here in the Piedmont. It's a little bit north of where we were earlier and the first salamander of the day is our main target here. This is the Webster salamander. This is actually my lifer. Um, these are really unique looking salamanders. Um, 
Really strange distribution as well. You can tell these apart from redback salamanders typically just by um, range and they are a lot shorter and quite a bit bulkier than southern redbacks. Um, got that serrated stripe too. Yeah, this one um, has the stripe on the tail which is pretty unique. Um, I haven't really ever seen any plethodon quite like this. So really cool salamanders. They have a unique habitat preference here. They like um, typically dry, pretty exposed slopes like this with a lot of rocks. And this one right here was actually found in the middle of a seepage, kind of in the water. So really strange behavior for a plethodon. But we got some good sunlight here. So we're going to do a quick photo shoot of this guy and put him back under his rock and keep on flipping for more. And the next salamander of the day is another Webster salamander. This one is very different looking from the last one. It has a weird orange yellow coloration that is kind of not so much of a stripe but goes throughout. And it has a little darker stripe um, between the back and the midsection. So really good looking salamander. These are pretty variable up here, but at the same time they have their own um, distinct look. In this area of the Piedmont, they look pretty different from other populations of Webster salamanders. And again, check out the habitat here. This is basically just a little seepy area here around some exposed rock on this slope. Um, they hang out in these areas to apparently have some moisture. This is not what I would typically associate redbacks and zigzags and all of their relatives with. So really interesting to see the variation here and the habitat these salamanders are using. So I'm going to photograph this one because it's really unique looking and put it back under its rock and keep on flipping. I wonder if the reason that we're finding so many under this wet stuff is that it wasn't wet last night. Come on. Next salamander is another Webster's here that I just flipped under this rock again. Notice the moisture under here. It's almost just a little bit of pulled up water. Um, the soil is really saturated. And it's here in this flat rock habitat where outside of the little seepy areas, there's really not much moisture and it's super exposed. Um, Noah just flipped another one, so I'll go check it out in just a minute. And this one's really nice looking, but pretty average. So I'm probably just going to move it real quick and put its rock back. All right, this is a fucking rock. Changed my mind. Let's take a look. Pretty sure Noah has a red back here. It's See pretty how solid the stripe is. Yeah, and also the speckles on the side. Mm -hmm. And so this may be one of the few sites anywhere in the Webster Salamanders range where they coexist with southern redbacks. All right, guys, right here is a closer look at what we believe is a southern redback salamander here that Noah just turned up. And here is the last Webster salamander. <laughs> Right here beside of it for comparison, you can see the red back has a much more true red stripe, even though it's still a weird pattern with the stripe being more prominent on the tail. And this Webster salamander here is much more orange, um, slightly bigger head, kind of more heavier bodied. Also notice the red back here kind of has some white speckles going on on the side and the Webster eye has that lower down. So really similar salamanders, but pretty different as well and the redbacks are more habitat generalists so not super surprised that they are here but it is cool because almost everywhere else where Webster salamanders occur there are no redbacks so really cool to see the two here together and be able to compare them I'm going to get some quick photographs and put them back under their rock and we'll see what else we can find right, here's a look at the habitat we're in really unique stuff um, Really grassy open slope here with a lot of good rocks and nice one adult it's a little, one. little one all right Noah's got a bullfrog we're going to go check that out next but anyway I'm going to put these guys back and retrieve the Webster eye here all right here's a quick look at this little juvenile American bullfrog that Noah turned up um, not really where you'd expect to see them but they can be found pretty much anywhere and once they get big they will 
find areas like this where there's a food source and just hang out. Um, right here's a shot of the habitat again. Um, yeah, nice little American bullfrog. Um, we're seeing diversity. I'm just going to put this guy back and keep on after it. All right, guys, we are working this seep here at this Webster I site, hoping to see some spring salamanders or something different. And I just hiked upon a tiny, um, I wouldn't say hatchling, maybe a few month old, potentially yearling, probably too small for that actually, but little uh, Webster salamander here just out in the open in this seep. Again, these are fully terrestrial salamanders, so really weird to see them sitting in these seepage areas. This one's just out on the crawl here in broad daylight. Um, as you can see, really similar to the adults. Um, yeah, just a weird place to see one here. This is at the head of a seep. As you can see, it's dry up above. So we're going to work this, see if we can find some, maybe some more unique looking desk mods or reds or springs or somebody here. So we're going to keep after it. So under this rock right here in the water, this is in C2. Um, we have two Webster salamanders. Um, one is trying to burrow into the stream here, not sure what it's doing. These are supposed to be fully terrestrial salamanders that spend their entire lives on land and supposedly lay eggs on land, but has anybody seen their eggs? Um, supposed to have no aquatic larval stage or association with water, but here they are in this little stream. Not sure what these guys are doing. I have never seen a plethodon be so aquatic and I have never seen a stream like this without any aquatic species in it so not sure what's going on but I'm just going to carefully put this rock back and let these guys continue hanging out in the water here what a strange habitat to find plethodon in I mean look at that crazy and right here we have two more Webster salamanders um, I'm about to quit filming these because I don't want a whole video to be nothing but Webster's, but these are really cool. Um, these are two more average looking individuals. Um, the one on the right here looks pretty similar to a redback, but these both look like Webster. I noticed the really short, stocky build, almost like a Weller salamander that you guys have seen in some of my earlier videos before I moved to Georgia. But I'm um, getting some nice sunlight here, so I'm just going to move this rock these guys back here's another shot of this insane habitat there's not a lot of this in this region so really cool just to be out here so the next salamander is yet another webster salamander pretty similar to the first one this one has a more orange stripe throughout um, another one with a really pretty tail nice and big this is a small species um, completely terrestrial much like the other plethodon um, this is about as big as they get. This one was under a more traditional log here, like what you would expect redbacks or something a little more normal under. But again, in this really weird habitat, you can see the development off in the distance here. Um, I'm just gonna put this guy's log back and keep on flipping and hopefully we will see some more diversity. So we have now moved down this seep into some slightly different habitat and we just flipped a southern redback salamander and a webstered salamander side by side here. I can get a hold of the Websters um, under the same log. And right here is the southern redback salamander. As you can see, it has a longer, skinnier tail, more of a true red. And this webstered salamander right here, if I can keep it from getting away, notice it has a shorter, um, thicker tail and it's more of an orange so this is two classic examples here of each species webster eye right here on the right and southern redback right here it's pretty clear that the webster salamanders are obviously winning the competition battle here against the redbacks but redbacks are tough little salamanders so they are still in the mix here but um, i'm just going to put these two back get some photos for comparison and keep on after it all right everyone i just made it back to my apartment here and oddly enough those two southern redback salamanders that we found today were the only salamanders at the plethodon webster eye site that were not webster salamanders and that was really surprising to me because we were in some seepages some decent sized little streams and some aquatic habitats where i would have expected to see more but those places were still just full of webster salamanders so yeah really unique species 
uh, really unique habitat requirements as well. Um, I had a great time seeing them. And as you guys seen, there's a lot of spotted salamanders and other things active on the surface also. So that is a sign that spring is right around the corner. I am super psyched to get out and make some more videos for you guys as the warm weather um, moves through here in North Georgia and we head into spring. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. Like, comment, and subscribe if you want to. Do all that good stuff. And I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for watching.